Welcome back, future BCPS graduates. Today's video looks closely at Lesson 2 during the week of June 1st through 5th. We will be exploring how irony helps to develop multiple themes in a text. Let's take a look at our learning objective for today's lesson. After this lesson, you will be able to analyze an author's use of irony in a text in order to trace the development of multiple themes across a text. This is part two of a two-part lesson. In part one, you really explored the types of irony and how to differentiate what irony is from what irony is not. As you know from previous lessons, there are three types of irony that are used most often in literature. Those are dramatic irony, where the audience knows information that the characters are not aware of, verbal irony, where what is said is different from what is meant, and situational irony, where there is a difference between what the audience expects and what actually occurs. These are skills that we've already been working on in previous lessons in isolation. For example, in a previous lesson, you looked at how irony was developed at the end of A Soldier for the Crown. In a different lesson, you've looked at how multiple themes interact and develop over the course of the text. Today, we are going to put those two pieces of learning together to look at how irony develops and enhances the interaction between multiple themes. In the Think About It portion of today's lesson, you are going to select the text that you would like to analyze further. If you need a reminder, go back to the lessons where the texts were first explored. For the story of an hour, you would go back to the week of May 4th, and for a soldier for the crown, you would go back to the week of May 11th. Remember that the themes listed are expressed as theme topics, or as I like to think of them, theme seeds. So for the story of an hour, you're looking at the joy of independence and the oppressiveness of marriage. For a soldier for the crown, you're looking at isolation and lack of control over one's destiny. In order to write a theme statement, you need to elaborate on the topic to think about the message that the author is communicating about that topic in a more specific sentence. Remember that theme statements need to be specific to the text, but written in universal terms. This means that in a theme statement, we do not include character names or reference specific events in the text. In other words, I should be able to apply the theme statement to another book, movie, song, etc. I've written a few theme statements throughout the lesson, so if you need some examples, you can use the ones I've written to help illustrate what I mean. In your discussion response, you're going to post the title of the text that you chose and a theme statement that captures the author's development of multiple themes. Irony helps to develop theme by creating layers of meaning. It is a way to emphasize important elements in a text. And when an author establishes irony, he, she, they is choosing to provide the reader with a spotlight on a situation that is different than it seems. By calling attention to this, the author is really showing the reader what is important. Let's take a look at a text that you may have read or be familiar with from ninth grade, Romeo and Juliet. We're going to look at how irony helps to establish theme in that text as an example for when you are asked to do it for the text that you chose. Let's take a look at some examples from Romeo and Juliet to show you what I mean. First, irony creates layers of meaning. This example comes from Act 2, Scene 2, um, otherwise known as the famous balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet. Juliet says, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. The dramatic irony in this scene stems from the fact that the audience is aware that Romeo can hear Juliet, but she has no idea. Juliet is expressing her true feelings for Romeo, not knowing that Romeo can actually hear her. 
there are different layers of meaning to this situation because we know more than the characters do. Not only do we know, like Juliet, that there are social restraints on their budding romance, but we also know that Romeo and Juliet are fated to die at the end of the story. This leaves us to wonder, how might Romeo and Juliet's story have turned out differently if Romeo had never learned of Juliet's feelings for him? But of course, we also know that they are fated to die at the end of the story, and this is just one stepping stone on that already predestined path. Irony also emphasizes important elements in a text. So for example, Juliet also says, O Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. The dramatic irony in this scene emphasizes the fact that Romeo and Juliet are kept apart because of their familial ties. Because they come from these feuding families, they cannot be together. This is brought up again and again through Shakespeare's use of irony. This is not the first time or the only time that it, this is brought up. So for example, when Juliet and Romeo meet for the first time, they're wearing masks. They don't know who each other are. And had Juliet known that Romeo was a Montague when she first met him, would she have felt the same way? And vice versa, if Romeo had known that Juliet was a Capulet, would he have pursued her in the same way that he does later in the story? Romeo also tells Juliet later in this scene that her sweet gaze will protect him from her family. And we know, in fact, that that's not true, that his love for Juliet is actually what leads to his downfall. And then finally, later in the story, Juliet has to lie to her parents and pretend to marry Paris when we know that she's actually already married to Romeo. So these are three different examples of irony that is repeatedly calling attention to the way that the social constraints negatively affect Romeo and Juliet. Next, we know that when an author uses irony, um, it's calling a spotlight on a situation that is different than what it seems. So for example, um, Juliet professes her love for Romeo, and then Romeo says, shall I hear more or shall I speak at this? In a typical romance, the main character learning that the uh, person they are in love with also loves them back would be something that we would be excited about as an audience. We would typically be cheering, okay, great, Juliet loves Romeo. But in this story, it's different because we actually dread this situation. It's different than what we expect. We expect them to be happy and to live forever after, but we already know that the story ends in their death. We are also aware of Romeo's tendency to quickly fall in love. We know that he has an inability to control his emotions. And so him overhearing Juliet profess her love is not necessarily a good thing for him because we know that he moves quickly as highlighted by his relationship early in the, in the story. And so all of this is to say that when the author is implementing irony, um, the author is really showing the reader what is important. So for example, when we see this scene, we think of several questions. What might have happened if Romeo never learned of Juliet's true feelings? How might the story have ended differently if they did not have to hide their love? The audience also wonders, do Romeo and Juliet bear any responsibility for what happens to them, or does this show that what happens to them is beyond their control? And these questions about the story lead us to bigger questions about life and love in general. So for example, can love be a dangerous emotion for those not ready for it? What social constraints exist in our world that negatively affect what happens to us? And what degree of control do we have over what happens to us? Now that I've shown you an example of how irony can help to develop theme, I want you to reread the passage from your selected text. And you're going to annotate the passage in order to locate the examples of irony in the passage. Um, how the irony is used to create emphasis, and why the author might have wanted to create that emphasis as it relates to the themes developed in the story.
I'm going to take a look at an example from the story of an hour. This is a rereading, so I'm not going to read the whole passage aloud, but I'm going to think through how I've identified some examples of irony and thought about what the author might have been trying to emphasize. So the first example that I've located is when um, Mrs. Mallard says to herself, free, body and soul free. This is situational irony because we know that Mr. Mallard has just died and Mrs. Mallard is now celebrating that death. She's celebrating that she's now free from him. That's not what we would typically expect. Normally, we would expect someone to mourn the loss of their spouse. And so the fact that she's celebrating it causes us to take a step back and to pay attention to what's happening. I've also underlined the line where it says, Louise, open the door. I beg, open the door. You will make yourself ill. Mrs. Mallard's sister wrongfully believes that uh, Mrs. Mallard is uh, crying over the loss of her husband when in fact we know that she is celebrating, that she is happy to be free of him. And so I've located the examples of irony. Now I need to think about what is the irony emphasizing. And here the situational irony, the first example, highlights how great it feels to rely on an answer to no one but yourself. And so Mrs. Mallard is unapologetically um, experiencing that emotion of freedom. The second example emphasizes um, the way the expectations of others can influence our actions. Um, Mrs. Mallard's sister wrongfully believes that Mrs. Mallard is weeping and so um, because of that expectation Mrs. Mallard has to hide the way that she truly feels. And so the expectation of how she should react to the death of her husband overshadows the way that she truly feels. Um, and that really calls attention to the way that we are limited by the expectations of others. These are not the only examples of irony in this passage. So if you choose the story of an hour, um, there are at least two or three other examples of irony for you to annotate and think through. For your show what you know, you are going to use your annotations to complete the graphic organizer that demonstrates the connection between the author's use of irony and the themes developed throughout the text. The first part of the graphic organizer asks you to just um, identify some examples of irony so you can use your annotations to do that. Then you are going to think about theme, which you've already done in your think about it section. So you can take the themes and the theme statements um, and then demonstrate how that theme is developed through evidence in the text. The third section is going to ask you to explain the relationship between theme and irony. And then um, finally, how are the themes developed over the beginning, middle and end of the text? So for the third section of the graphic organizer, you're looking at how the irony contributes to the theme. I've included one example from Romeo and Juliet to help you think through how you might complete this graphic organizer. Notice how I haven't just copied and pasted from my annotations. Instead, I've used the chart to focus my thoughts and elaborate specifically on how the irony helps to develop the theme. So I've demonstrated how uh, the irony, such as when Romeo falls in love with Juliet, hours after his failed pursuit of Ro Rosalind, um, the way that he passionately pursues her after learning of her true feelings for him by hiding, and how he wrongfully believes that his love for her will overcome the other obstacles, demonstrate how love is a dangerous emotion for those who are not mature enough to handle it. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next week.